Yesterday, I saw the Beatles film yesterday. So here's a video I'm here to say. I have so many questions. <laughs> okay, so I was really excited to watch yesterday. I remember seeing it like at 2am, like four months ago, seeing the trailer. And I was so excited because I thought the premise was really interesting. I really like Himesh Patel. I remember him as Tamwa in EastEnders. And that was just me recognising who he was was an actual laugh. Um, I like Danny Boyle and I love Richard Curtis films. I love For Weddings and a Funeral, About Time Makes Me Cry, Love Actually is a Classic. So I thought it'd be a really good film. And don't get me wrong, there are some bits of the film I really enjoyed. And I went and saw it yesterday and my parents came with me and they really enjoyed it too. I had a lot of coincidences with the film yesterday because that weren't planned. So only a few but basically a few days ago we watched Glastonbury and the only act we properly watched was Michael Kiwanuka. I'm really sorry if I've butchered his name. And then the film features Michael Kiwanuka performing at a festival which was really weird. Then uh, right before we saw the film I was at Prezzo and I asked for a coke and they said sorry we only have Pepsi. So I was like okay Pepsi. And then in the film, Coke is erased from existence and all there is is Pepsi. And the most weirdest thing, we normally go and watch the film either, either in London or in Cambridge. But because we had a few things going on somewhere else, we ended up seeing the film in the county of Suffolk. Unplanned. We just, but that was the nearest film, it had the best show times, we thought let's go to the cinema in Suffolk. We watched the film and the characters and a big part of big part of the film takes place in Suffolk. And I'm just like, okay, <laughs> what? The good thing about it was for for my mum, she was a, a little kid when the Beatles were in their prime, so she heard their songs, but probably was a bit young to be like a big fan of their music. And she said that watching the film really brought back so many memories of her hearing the songs on the radio. I suppose that's the main goal I get. Like, it's a nice film. It's a Richard Curtis film, so it's going to be a love story, uh, mainly. Because that's just kind of what he thrives in writing. And But whilst bringing back the joy and the love of the Beatles music. So she really enjoyed it, and she loved hearing those songs and having the songs trigger childhood memories for her. So I think that's a good outcome of the film. Um, and there were other things I really liked about the film, like I think the comedy was really great. Um, I liked Rocky, uh, his character was an idiot but he was, he was fun, he wasn't annoying. I think he was like the good kind of stereotypical um, best friend, sidekick kind of stereotype. Um, and what else did I like? I liked that the Beatles weren't the only thing that disappeared from the world because, to be honest, having everything stay the same and the only thing only thing that's changed is that the Beatles doesn't exist sounds a bit ridiculous. But however, however, but taking other things away such as Coke, cigarettes, Harry Potter, Oasis, it just makes it a bit more realistic. And, oh my god, if I lived in that world where there was no Beatles, my favourite band, no Coke, my favourite drink, and no Harry Potter, my favourite book series slash film series, I'd have an actual meltdown. I'd be fucking fuming! Oh, I'd, I'd go insane. Um, but yeah, I really liked that they thought, well, do other things exist? And yeah, there was consequences, like, because obviously the Beatles didn't exist, Oasis didn't exist, and also unrelated things like Coke... What's that? We only have Pepsi. It's just, I, I liked that idea very much. Um, I also loved that the song, some of the songs were implemented into the score. So during some scenes with them, uh, Jack and Ellie, you could hear something. And um, the something scene from the trailer got cut out in the film, which is really sad, but um, at least you could hear it in the score. And I thought that was really touching. And you could also hear Let It Be in the score, and I thought that was really sweet to hear as well. 
um, and little elements of a day in the life, like the orchestral section, like especially when like the blackout is happening, I could hear bits and pieces of that. Um, I also really found Jack's frustration hilarious because he's trying to, there's a scene where he's trying to play Let It Be and obviously Let It Be is such an amazing song but in this universe people haven't heard it and he, he's like trying to get them to realise that the, these are the first people in the world that are hearing one of the greatest songs ever and because he keeps getting interrupted he just freaks out on them and I think that's really relatable because if any Beatles fan was trying, was in his situation, you would just go crazy that no one's appreciating it. Um, another scene I loved was the, I can't remember the long, the long name, but the board meeting at the Universal Music Group thing. And they're trying to go, trying to decide what the best um, album cover would be. And it was funny because you're like bringing those ideas but into the modern day and like you see the picture of Abbey Road where there's like a dump truck and it's not looking its best and it's kind of hilarious and then Jack's like well that's not kind of what I was going for and um, the, the white joke was just that was a bit funny um, to me it was anyway like not really diverse <laughs> just like I liked what they were commenting about on that and uh yeah that bit i found hilarious and the actual album cover that they went with i kind of liked because he's doing um the same mirror selfie pose that um paul did and i thought that was really sweet and i also really liked the point that they made about how it they called the album one night only because it's jack it's only jack he's the only one like playing the instruments and he's the only one writing whereas other artists these days have quite a lot of songwriters and I, I really do miss that bit where I really do think it's bad how that's now a rarity that there's only one person writing the songs now I'm sure there's tons and tons of artists out there who do solely write their songs but it's just not as a not a common thing anymore and that's I just find that a little bit sad you know although it must be great for the freelance songwriters that get to collaborate because collaboration is very good too but you know you do wish that there were more Jack Malik's one night only people around um but yeah uh, what else did I like I love that um the scenes in Liverpool I loved that he went there and I got really excited because I'm hoping to go to Liverpool for the first time for my birthday and do like a kind of Beatles pilgrimage so it was nice that he went so that he could experience what it was like being in that environment in order to justify him having the songs um Eleanor Rigby, Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane so that was great I loved that he wasn't the only person who knew about the beat who remembered the Beatles that I when I saw that scene where the guy is just in awe of Jack playing back in the USSR I was like oh, he's not the only one that I found great um what else did I like I've got like notes down because and, and trying to remember everything. I liked that he was struggling to remember all the songs, like especially with Eleanor Rigby. I remember watching an interview of Richard Curtis saying he didn't listen to any of the songs by them whilst he was writing the script to really get into the mindset of you're the only person that remembers the Beatles, now try and remember every single lyric and every single note that they did. And so the whole like kind of running gag with him trying to remember Eleanor Rigby, one of the most wordiest complex songs of their discography was hilarious i would have liked to have seen of his i would have liked to have seen a scene of him trying to remember the words of i'm the walrus that would have been funny or even a scene of him trying to think about revolution 9 that would be hilarious like would he have done it did he actually try and replicate it that would have been cool um oh and one of the favorite things that I realized later on was that when he performs Here Comes the Sun on stage he has people playing the ukulele and George loved the ukulele he oh that was so sweet I loved that that was like a little tribute to George and I thought that was amazing right now there's, an, there's a, a scene that I'm gonna say is probably the most surprising and controversial and some people probably love it some people are probably like yeah but I'm going to say no matter how no matter how you feel about it, it definitely threw you. So we all thought Paul and Ringo were going to cameo and 
because of that scene in the trailer where they're on James Corden and their feet appear. They don't. That's a nightmare sequence, which kind of annoyed me because I would have loved to have seen Paul and Ringo. They show John instead, because obviously if they weren't in the Beatles, John wouldn't have been shot and probably would still be alive. So they showed a scene of Jack going to visit John, who's 78, and he's in this little, like, country house by himself, got a little art everywhere for what he's done, and at first it threw me, I was like, oh, they're doing this? Because you don't know, some people might not take that the right way, they're resurrecting someone who died in a horrific way for a film and it's kind of like oh don't know but you kind of see also the sentiment of well in this universe john would still probably be alive and i loved the bit where he was just like can i give you a hug because i think we'd all want to do that because it's just you, you really do wish he was still here it's just horrible how he went so that was kind of sweet and yeah i I was a little bit thrown when I first saw that scene, but looking back on it now, it is a sweet moment and very like emotional, but I think it could have been a bit longer or probably just had a bit more oomph to it. I feel like it kind of fell a little bit flat. Also, the one thing that majorly threw me off was that I knew it was um, Robert Carlyle who um, is in train spotting and is also in the show Once Upon a Time, among many other things. But I mainly recognised him from Once Upon a Time. And so I was just like, oh my god, that's that's Rumple Stiltskin. What's he doing here? And even though he looked a lot like John, that it had like he had long hair, the glasses. It was his voice that threw me off. It didn't sound right. I think if he had. He, prob he wasn't really going for John's idiolect. I, I, I don't even know if I'd call it an evocation. It just kind of sounded like his regular voice, or at least how he sounds in Once Upon a Time, which is Scottish in a way. It's Scottish. It didn't sound Liverpudlian. Um, so I think he could have had a better voice, but I suppose he's not really going for an imitation. It's more of just... It's like, well, it's not like Taron sounded exactly like Elton John in Rocket Man, so, you know, probably that aspect didn't really matter, but I think it could have helped. Um, yeah. And now I'm going to have, like, I have a lot of questions and a few issues. For me, having one person only remember the Beatles is a bit more realistic than three people remembering the Beatles. I loved that there was more people, but I kind of wish there were a few more people remembering them or have some people that only remember coke or people that remember harry potter like it would have been cool if they were featured in it more like what if a, there was like say maybe 10 people in the world that remember the beatles and jack meets them all and they how about what if they started collaborating and making the music together i think that would have been great or trying to do more to preserve their songs or something up. That would have been cool. Um, yeah. Uh, also, another problem I had was that the ending felt very rushed. I didn't like that at all. It really annoyed me. He just uploads the songs online. And then what? What happens afterwards? Are the songs preserved? Like, the ending shows what happened to Jack and Ellie and they get married and they have kids and that's lovely. Um, and he's I think he's a teacher, Just before, I don't know if he's a music teacher, but he's performing music to his students. But what happens to the Beatles songs? Does John, does 78 year old John Lennon turn on the news or something and find out he's been credited with writing all these songs that he has supposedly never written in this reality? Same for Paul, George and Ringo, and George would be alive in this universe, really, technically speaking, because if cigarettes didn't exist, he would have never smoked them and then never contracted cancer. Unless he got a different cancer in his reality, which I hope he didn't, he mo most likely be alive. So what are Paul, George and Ringo doing in this universe? Paul and George were friends before the Beatles, so what happened with them? 
John was part of the Quarrymen before the Beatles and w was always interested in art and songwriting. So did he just not go through with that? Like, I need answers. What Did Ringo become successful with Rory Storm and the Hurricanes? Did Rory Storm and the Hurricanes become big? What happened? Ugh. And yeah, like, d did people start to treasure and appreciate the Beatles music after the songs were uploaded online? Like, what? Did, was the legacy preserved? Uh, it's just no answer no answer about that it's quite annoyed me um and yeah also the talent show if a racist didn't exist what did what did jack sing to everyone else did did wonderwall become another song that he supposedly wrote or do other people remember him singing a different song that that point doesn't really matter but you know like the film is good if you don't overanalyze it. However, I'm a film student and I'm a Beatles fan, so I'm going to overanalyze it. I think a lot of films aren't perfect. You can make a film that you think is absolutely perfect and answers everything and someone's going to have a problem with it. But, um, yeah, so but I feel like this film had too many questions unanswered that it, it does fall flat. If you are a casual fan, or you're just someone who like who just feels intrigued to watch the film, you're going to like the film. It is a good film. It's got a great soundtrack, it's a nice story, and it's just a feel-good film overall. However, if you are a Beatles fan, there are so many questions unanswered, it will drive you quite mad. So, I was let down, but I, I, I'm not saying I don't like the film. I like the film. It's just... In the age of Bohemian Rhapsody, which, which isn't perfect by all means, that film has a lot of issues. But Queen fans can still kind of enjoy that film. And in the age of Rocket Man, which was amazing, Beatles fans probably want a bit more than yesterday. And this film was marketed so much to be about the Beatles, about the Beatles, whereas in the film, the Beatles kind of take are the background to the story, they're not the foreground. The foreground is a love story, because it's a Richard Curtis film. But Richard Curtis did a film called About Time, which focuses on time travel, so a science fiction kind of element, and love. But what makes that film work better than yesterday is that the time travel only affects a few people in the film, the main characters. So even though he keeps changing time, no one else is affected, so there are no other worldly questions. This is about a blackout that causes like so many things to disappear, and yet we don't get the answers to those questions, and that has affected the world. So it's, it's too many questions to answer. I feel like you could either make this film purely about the blackout and the Beatles, or even the blackout on coke, the blackout on Harry Potter, the blackout on cigarettes, the blackout on Oasis. It's like, you could make a film about the blackout, find out what the cause was, because you never, in the film, you don't find out what the hell was that. What was the cause? Nothing. So you could either make a film purely about the blackout and the disappearance of the Beatles, or you could make this love story and have the Beatles be the soundtrack. You can't really combine both because you're going to get a lot of issues, so unless they made the film longer or have the love story take a back seat, then the film is sadly a bit of a complicated mess. However, I still enjoyed it, not as much as I wanted to, but if you want to watch it casually and not overthink it, you will enjoy it. This is a very blah video this is very unorganized but I really wanted to upload it today so that I could do that running joke in the beginning and I know that a lot of people have been wondering what I thought about it and obviously it's taken me 18 minutes to talk about it so basically I liked it a bit underwhelmed wish it answered a lot more questions however for a nice rom-com with a great soundtrack it was good I don't hate it, I'm not in love with it, it was okay. I preferred Rocket Man.
and I'm going to see Spider-Man tomorrow so hopefully that'll be good too. Thanks for watching and some record videos will be coming soon. Bye guys! <laughs>